there's three different sections to this porti. And please know that this porti is preceded by the 17th and 18th porti, which both end with the same verses. Uh, well, almost the same because the 18th is slightly different. Um, with the same verse at the end, Kudrat the Kavan Kaha Vichar, Varyana Java, Ekavar, Chotudabhave, Sai Balikar, Dusada Salamat Nurankar. The 17th and 19th party end with that. And then the 18th party, Nanak Nich Kaha Vichar, there's a slightly variation uh, that Guru Nanak puts on that party. And the, the 17th party is an ex explanation, as Sri Singh Sabji also described, of the positive mind. It describes everything that is positive and all the, uh, the positive aspects of God in creation. And then the, the 18th party is all of the negativity, all the negative, uh, less attractive aspects of, of God, even, you know, to the people who are murderers, et cetera. And Nanak uh, describes himself as, um, as being uh, associated with those in the context of we, we all have these qualities of within our own selves. And then, uh, and then he, we come to the 19th party, which uh, has, as I'm describing here, three different sections to it. So it starts out as the two previous parties do with the words, with the word asank being repeated multiple times. And so in, in, the, in the 17th party, we start out with asanka jap, asanka bao, you know, countless of the meditations, countless the loves, et cetera, et cetera. And in the 18th party, asanka murika, asanka agor, you know, countless of the thieves and the, and, and the miscreants of creation, et cetera. And, um, and then here in the 19th party, Guru Nanak Dev Ji starts out with Asankata. Now, it's really interesting to consider why are we talking about this word countless, you know? Um, and I want to just encourage everyone to use your imagination as a means of, of expanding your consciousness mentally. There was a, a once a, a lecture that Sri Singh Sabji gave where he, he said, you know, just imagine yourself as, as the greatest yogi on the planet. And it was part of a several part meditation. And that he described how important it was to use the imagination in many lectures. And really, if you listen to Guru Nanak, you'll get the same message. Our minds are a storehouse of infinite, of, of infin, of infinity literally. And so your mind has the capacity to take you to infinity within a split second. And so if I were to imagine myself, and this is one of the thoughts I have, as being someone who lived on this planet long before uh, society existed in the way we know it today, many, many, uh, you know, centuries ahead of our current technology, and you're a human being sitting on the planet and you're looking around and maybe one day you are sitting there saying, geez, I wonder how many things there are here on this, in, in, you know, on this earth or, you know, and you start counting, I count a bird, I count a tree, I count the flower. So you start counting how many things are there. And, um, and then you realize, wow, the more of these I count, the more there are, it's just, it keeps on going. A person would probably count the whole day and still not, not end up having counted everything because there's the leaf, there's the, the bumblebee, there, you know, there's the ant. And then just when you think you've counted them all, there's another. So Guru Nanak is, is he's mesmerizing his own self, you know, and, and, and talking about these countless things that there are and by actually counting them. So it's interesting to count because it invariably brings you to infinity. And that's the beauty of counting. So we start out with a Sankanav. There's countless names. And so each one of those things that you're looking around at, each one of the actions, each one of the experiences that we have, there are just countless of these names, of these identities, literally means name. 
and we can't possibly count them all. Uh, it's, it is impossible, but they're all names. They all have identities. They all have references that we as humans have assigned to them and that they have uh, of their own. And then there are countless places, a sanctav. So not only are we talking about objects, but we're talking about environments. So if you even move a foot, a yard, even an inch, you're in a different place. You're in a different reality. And so there are countless of these places that where time and space exist and where we come together and where we separate, whichever the case may be, but there, there are countless of these places. Just think of it, every human being has their own place. And within the human being, they have countless places within themselves. And then within them are, are, uh, are all the things that are associated with the people and the places that they know. And then there's all the people and places that they don't know. I mean, it's, it's mind boggling. And it's, it's also awesome and incredible just to take your mind there and to start just to think of that one thing, countless names. So you're thinking of the identifications of God and this creation and all that exists. And it's just, it's again, mind boggling and mind blowing to just consider that. And then to think of all the places. And then Guru Nanak goes to this uh, incredible place, which is why in the description I said he takes us to the universe and beyond. Agama agam asank lo. And I love this line. Agam agam, love those words. It's like, it's, it's a sound actually is what it is. It's a sound current, agam agam. And it's a sound of a reverberation. And it's remote and it's all of the vibrations that are coming from as far away in the universe as anyone could possibly perceive or imagine or conceive. And here comes the sun. So I'm going to shade it a little bit here so I'm not blinded. So um, Agam Agam is with the greatest extent of remoteness. And then he says Agam Agam Asank Lo. So he's saying that remoteness is countless, as is Loa. And Loa is, can be defined as worlds and peoples. So it's not just places, but it's also names and identities. And, um, you know, whatever you want to imagine that to me to be, but I take it literally as being peoples. There are, uh, you know, there are, there are, you know, just know that the U.S. just released its, uh, all of its top secret reports on UFOs and uh, alien, uh, you know, creatures and all of that, that they've been studying for, you know, decades. And now there's a lot more um, scientific understanding and proof of the possibility, not only the possibility, but actual evidence of um, UFOs and what have you. I'm not uh, making any statement about that directly, but is it possible that we live in in, in, a, in a universe where there are other other souls and other identities? Well, if we look at our own planet, you know, what does a zebra know about us? You know, what does a uh, you know what does a porcupine you know know of our existence? Well, just flip the the tables there and think of it in another way. So it's, it's a beautiful concept that Guru Nanak is giving us, a sank, a gum, a gum, a sank low. So just there's an there's a infinite remoteness, uh, an infinite um, number and um, breadth of, um, of this universe, a gum, a gum, a sank low, and all that it contains, and all the identities it contains, going back to a sankanav, a sankatav. 